of ring road are closed and then will be taken by the sports people. Return to simplicity, which includes low and no cost solutions that very often have mass for characters and uh, this includes walking, cycling, all sorts of very simple and also low cost opportunities and one example is also the Tafisa World Walking Day which we run every year at the end of September. It's not anymore only the youth people who are targeted at, it's also including adults and seniors, but moreover families, women and handicapped people. So the mix of target groups has been increasing quite a lot. The political recognition of sport for all is quite high. Of course, this does not mean in uh, retrospective that this includes high budgets and funding for sport for all in a given country. But we were quite surprised to find out that in most of the countries, Sport for all is some sort of being reflected in policy papers up to the national constitution, but also as part of an official government policy paper on the national level. International cooperation is seen to be very crucial. Most of the countries have at least bilateral or international cooperation, different models, and they make it, make it very, sure, very sure that they benefit from this international exchange. There is a strong tendency of the foundation of sport for all organizations. Apparently, one reason for that is that the traditional system, in some ways and in some cases, is not prepared to accept sport for all in its own rights. So this is quite an interesting aspect from the situation of the structure. <coughs> Major obstacles of, for the growth of sport for all. Indeed, there is ins insufficient budget. We have political support, but this does not pay into budget, in many cases, however. And, uh, but we also know that for Sport for All, most of the income is coming from the government sponsorships, membership fees and donations. But of course, this is a very big point still in many countries of the world. And inadequate status when it comes to uh, the support by, by mass media, but also when it comes to uh, the support uh, within the official sport policy, where of course in many countries the support of top sports, elite sports, is predominant. Lack of facilities. In developed countries, the relation between number of inhabitants and facilities is very high. So I'll just have a look at the Netherlands. Here we have one facility for less than 900 inhabitants. It might be similar in Germany or Finland or in some other Western European countries. However, it's pretty clear that uh, this relation increases with the econ economic status of the country. And uh, higher education rates in developed countries, of course, are also a major result of this bad supply of facilities. Lack of personnel. We all know to run an effective nationwide sport for all program, it needs people. It not just needs qualified instructors, it above all needs volunteers. We, in my country, are very happy that we have a whole system of at least 5 million women, youngsters and men who are somehow involved in sport in Germany as volunteers. But this is not all over the place. So to run sport for all economically and uh, cost efficiently nationwide, we have to think about building up systems of volunteers. And this is possible uh, how, uh, since we know about this from quite some time. Not regular programs. Many countries open up and offer to their audience and their population single mass sport events, one day events. But there is a lack, there is a gap when it comes to regular programs which allow for grand portions of the audience and the, uh, of the population to really have opportunities for sport for all at least once a week. So we have to work on this level of course as well. There is an uneven distribution of opportunities, that is to say, still quite a gap between urban and rural areas, and uh, many times programs that are originally coming from major cities do not equally spread all over the country. What are the major conclusions of the survey? Indeed, Sport for All has become a global movement, reaching most of countries. So what has, has been started in Europe about seven years ago is now being popular all over the place in all continents. It has been accepted as a term, so the term sport for all 
can be mentioned as the semantic framework when we are corresponding amongst each other. It is widely established concerning political recognition, structure, programs, responsibility. It has, of course, to face obstacles in terms of lack budget, personnel, facilities, and uh, at least uh, the use of global programs is a pattern of great effectiveness. To come to a conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have achieved? I think it is very clear that most of the governments in the world by now have been adopting sport for all and physical activity promotion as one of their major goals. This is clear. Moreover, research has proven, fully proven, that the benefits of physical activity and sport for all are existing. We have been listening to many speakers during this conference and this has been made very clear. So, we are now in a situation that it really needs action. So, a global activity plan or a campaign <coughs> inclusive, including practical tools that are applicable to countries according to their different level of development is very important. And uh, this brings me to my last chart. Uh, just putting forward a quotation from Professor Paul Zimmert, Australian Director of the International Diabetes Institute. Strategies to increase physical activity are the most effective weapon to combat obesity. Thank you very much for your attention. Some marketing action on the area of sport for all. Because uh, everything, uh, everything are selling through the marketing action. And I think if we want to change the lifestyle, if we want to increase uh, the sport uh, active population, we need a strong marketing action. Uh, maybe the hard part is a propaganda action. So let's make it very clear from Patisa's point of view, it goes without saying, marketing will be one of the key words of what we are heading for. Without any marketing, we will not be able to fulfill our goals and to reach our objectives. And of course, there are already existing quite some different marketing strategies. Let me just refer to the International Challenge Day. Let me refer to the International World Walking Day. Let me refer to the Busan Sport for All Games that we, uh, took place recently. But to give a short answer to your question, yes, marketing is one of the key elements and catchwords for the future development and promotion of sport for all and physical activity.